Well, good afternoon. We have another Bark River up to show off today. This is the Bravo 1.5. We have already gone over Bravo 1, Bravo 1.25. This one is obviously a much bigger brother, at least to visually look at it, it's a much bigger brother. When you actually hold the three of them in your hand, you can just see it gradually progresses on as the numbers increase. Now, obviously these three blades are gonna share a lot of characteristics, but with the gradual increase in size, there are some significant differences as well. Hang around and I'll show them off to you. Welcome back. Thanks for choosing to spend your time with me today. I do appreciate it very much. We have, like I said, the Bark River Bravo 1.5. Now it's just a beauty of a blade. Very similar to the other two we've gone over in recent weeks, but it is significantly longer. We'll go over the specs here in just a minute to get you guys a little bit more familiar about the specifications of this particular model so you can kind of compare to previous models that we've gone over. But right off the bat, what I want to point out is you have about that much extra cutting edge or that much extra cutting edge however you want to look at it with this 1.5 which does translate to some at least in my mind significant and depending on who you are and what you want to do with it it may be more minor differences in it it does take the differences between the bravo 1 and the bravo 1.25 just a step further and make this one stand out quite a bit more so than the 1.5 did over the one so if you compare the 1.5 to the one and i know the numbers are getting crazy here that you're going to see a much more drastic difference between this one and the bravo one which is their standard or normal model of the bravo this particular bravo 1.5 it is in CPM 3V which I know I kind of messed up on the last review and called it V3 but you know whatever you guys are gracious you understood what I was trying to say anyway this one is in 3V I have found this to be an incredible steel I have used this for a lot of stuff regular woodcrafty bushcrafty bushcrafty type stuff that you're used to seeing on my channel here but when I review a knife I test it out for a few weeks doing a myriad of things carrying it in daily life and as I'll throw in a couple pictures and maybe a couple slides here a couple weekends ago I spent a significant amount of time building a bunk bed and some bookshelves and stuff for my son and I used this quite a bit in that process just to smooth out corners to clean up notches stuff like that so you know this does have a place in real life as well it does because it is longer I'm not going to take much time to showcase it here. You can choke up on it with your non-dominant hand and use it as a draw knife, which I used it a lot for that and that construction type work. It works really well in everyday life as well as in the woods. But you guys want to see this thing shine in the woods. So let's go, go ahead and run down the specs. I'll talk about what differences I've noticed between this blade and the 1.5 and the 1 itself. And then we'll get into a viewer request, which is a primitive trap. Again, this is the Bark River Bravo 1.5. This one is in CPM 3V. Overall length is 11 inches. Blade length is 5.8 inches. Blade thickness is 0.217 inches inches at the spine itself obviously it's going to decrease as you get down near towards the edge the weight is 9.8 ounces again the steel is cpm 3v with a rockwell hardness of 58 to 60. the base price point that i found on this knife is about 270 dollars that is going to change depending on what handle material you want and where you get it i have actually seen them cheaper than that about 250 dollars on ebay but you know don't hold me to that guy ebay is unreliable it may be there today but it may not be there tomorrow so like i said base price is around 270 dollars on knives ship free the overall blade cutting profile is exactly the same on this one obviously it is a longer blade than the one or 1.25 but as far as how it functions it's Fun functions exactly the same you can do some light batoning work with it you can feather carving work all that stuff it works just the same you have a longer cutting edge to it which I'll go over the benefits of that here in just a minute and another similarity that I'm not going to touch on too terribly much today because I've talked about it quite a bit in previous videos is their convex grind I am a huge fan of their convex grind because they they have really found the sweet spot between it really if you want it to it will act almost exactly like a Scandi ground blade but if you taper back the angle of your cut a little bit, it will act more like a, a full convex. It runs the gamut from a very fine crafting knife to a knife that has a lot deeper bite like a Scandi does. The blade length adds uh, more of a tip heavy weight. It's not unbalanced by any means. However, that does lend it to some lighter chopping tasks. I would put it in the category of like craft chopping. Like if you're wanting to flatten out a hearth board or you know, you're removing little bits of material, making a spoon or something like that, and you're wanting to chop down into it to kind of set a baseline and then remove small amounts of material at a time, it does work well for that as i mentioned by viewer request had a viewer ask that the next time i review a bark river knife to show off making primitive trap and my skill set is not one to teach you how to make a primitive trap i can make them but i'm not a master at it by any means anyway with that being said let's get into one today now 
figure fours, peyote traps, stuff like that, they're, they're fairly common. I wanted to get into something a little bit different, a primitive trap that I've played around with that I've had a lot of fun with. Now, honestly, I don't remember the name. I don't remember what he coined it as, but I learned this on William Myers' channel, Mantis Outdoors. I, like I said, I don't remember what he called it. It works under a similar principle as a figure four, but it is significantly different. The trap itself is a lot easier to make, but it is a lot trickier to set up. What I'm doing is I'm gonna create a push cutter, create a 90 degree angle right there and flatten it out through here and do the same thing on this corresponding piece of wood. You wanna go about halfway because you want these two when they both have the notch in them, you want them to pair up as if they were still one stick. Now I do need to square these up a little bit, but I don't want them completely square because I don't want them to get completely set. Otherwise, once the trigger stick is, is tripped, they may actually bear the weight by themselves. And even for a bigger knife, as you can see, doing this finer work with the profile of this tip and the belly up here does an excellent job. As is usually the case, at least with me, there still is a little bit of a gap, so we're gonna go ahead and trim up this end a little bit. Slicing right through there across grain. I said it may be convex, but it's got plenty of bite to it. Okay, well, we will fine tune this as we are setting the trap just to kind of make it fit in. But that is basically what you're going to want. Now, let's talk about a trigger stick. The idea here is fall down there. Let's take our trigger stick and create a square notch in it to fit around here. What that will do is it'll hold these two pieces together until the bait's tripped. There is your basic premise. Like I said, kind of tapering it and making it fit. Because once you remove too much material, you can't put it back. So if you remove too much, you gotta start over again. So I'm tapering this bottom post to let that bottom one roll over top of it. This thing kind of preload a little bit. Like I said, folks, and as I'm sure it's painfully obvious, I'm not an expert at primitive trapping, but I do dabble around with it sometimes. Anyway, let's talk about this knife again. The Bark River Bravo 1.5. What can I say that I haven't already said? I mean, it's an excellent blade. If, you, if you're into a longer bushcraft or woodsman style blade, this might be something for you to consider. The, the blade steel on this, the CPM 3V, it is absolutely excellent. The edge retention just seems to keep on going and going and going. I like it. I've already gone over a lot of pros throughout different stages of this video. Are there any negatives? You know, I'm going to go back and say the same thing I've said about every other Bravo that I've had. I don't particularly care for that ramp. At first I thought I would get used to it, at first I thought I would grow to like it, and it kind of sort of did grow on me, but overall I would prefer not to have that ramp. But, like I've said before, I can't count that as a negative. I can send it back to Bark River and have them grind it off, which I probably will do. So just to brief sum up, things I really like about this knife. I really like the handle. I like that the handles are all the same in the Bravo line. I like the steel. It stays sharp forever. It keeps a razor's edge. I like the convex grind on this. It, you can transfer from a Scandi-like cut over to a convex cut with ease. It just matters on the angle that you're using. I like the, the blade profile, the cutting profile of it. It works great for just about everything that I do. In fact, 
right off the top of my head I can't think of anything that it doesn't work well on. You can choke up on it like you can like a meat processing blade. You can skin out a deer. You, you can butcher a deer with this, this blade with ease. That is one area that I think the blade length on this would shine if you're processing a large animal. The extra blade length here is going to help you out quite a bit. And overall with this entire Bravo series that I've done, there are two things that keep on coming back to me about these. Number one, they are aesthetically perfect. I mean the fit and finish on these things is outstanding. Another thing, and more importantly, that I keep on coming back to about these Bravo Series blades is they're just straight up comfortable, man. This this handle, I mean, it is it is nice and comfy. No hot spots, no hand fatigue, no matter how much I've been beating on the thing. They're just absolutely comfortable. I really like them. Anyway, I know I've yacked quite a bit. Thank you very much for being here today. I do appreciate it. If you have found this video helpful, found it informative about whether this is the knife or at least knife line for you maybe, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Also, guys, there's a subscribe button right down here. I invite you to make use of that if you'd like to continue to see content such as this. And also, and more importantly, would you hit up the comment section let me know what you think of this blade. And also, I do my best to keep knife reviews from being repetitive. So maybe go ahead and give me suggestions of things or activities that you would like to see in, in an upcoming knife review. And on that note, maybe let me know some knives you'd like to see highlighted here on this channel. Anyway, thank you very much again for being here today. I do appreciate your time very much, and I will see you next time. I hope you guys have a great day.